Meow everybody, my name is Lino and today I'm going to be talking about something different today. Animal Farm. So before we get into the video, I would just like to say that, again, these videos take a lot of time, effort, energy, and preparation. You know, between setting up the studio, editing the videos, and recording them in the first place, these videos take hours. So it would be really nice if you could go ahead and subscribe. It's free, easy, and there's no commitment, so you can always unsubscribe or unlike whatever the heck you want. All right, so with all that said and done, let's get started. So this is a bit of a weird one for me because I usually stick to the realm of Eren Hunters. Uh, generally, you know, the Eren Hunters, they're a team of people, and so I, one, I read the books that are actually under the pen name Eren Hunter, and I usually stick to books that are written by other Eren Hunters uh, like outside of their pen name. So this is weird for me because not only is this but written by someone totally unrelated, um, George Orwell, I believe, uh, but it's an old book. It's from not the 2000s. Animal Farm is like a fable kind of a story which discusses communism, socialism, all that jazz. I usually don't get too deep into this because it's very political and also I'm just not really into that kind of stuff. I don't really like studying social, economic, political kind of stuff. I'm more into like sciences and uh, literature in general, but this was actually really interesting and I think it, it's really cool just to go to show how power in general can get to one's head no matter what kind of system you're in. Uh, just power just kind of just corrupts everyone it was it was it was dark <laughs> it was dark and it was the characters they were they were very well fleshed out surprisingly for such a short book it was very good it's like a fable kind of story where you learn a very clear lesson and i think that's the lesson that is usually taken away from this is the line uh, all animals are equal but some animals are more equal than others that sounds kind of weird to my head and it doesn't really make sense, but I guess it means that some animals, like pigs for example, that all pigs are equal, all leaders are equal, but then there's the other animals or all the other people and they are equal, but in a different way, in like at, at different levels. I don't know, I'm not really sure how to interpret that, but that's generally how my mind worked around it. So. Animal Farm, I would give it a 10 out of 10, actually. I really enjoyed it. It was very dark, and it was it was perfectly paced. It was perfectly paced to be able to cover a very large time span while still making interesting characters, making the events really crazy. And now that I'm done with the review, I'm going to give a very brief summary. It's basically about this old pig who's like, oh, yay, communism, we can overthrow the humans in our farm. And so all the people are... Uh, inspired by that old ki uh, pig who had this huge speech on his deathbed and then everyone got together and overthrew the humans. And hence, Manor Farm turned into Animal Farm, run exclusively by animals. Now, a lot of stuff went down, but basically it didn't end well. The animals themselves were actually capable of running the farm. It's just that things happened with the leadership. And so, yeah, there's my brief, primarily spoiler-free summary, and now I'm going to get into details. All right, so this is a very short book. Let me see how many pages there are actually. There's about, yeah, it's only like, it's only like a hundred pages and the text is like this. So it's like a very, very short one. It's, it's like a short novella, um, but it does cover a very large time period and lots and lots of events. And yet it's written in a way where you know the characters and you can like understand them and it's, they're very consistent. They're, that's the thing I want to emphasize, is that each character is 100% unique, 100% different from all the others except for the sheep, but the point of the sheep is that they're all the same and they're just kind of all idiots over there. Um, but all of them have their own thing going on, whether it's Benjamin with his like grumpy unspeakingness <laughs> or it's old boxer with his determinedness. It's the character traits are kind of generic and kind of, they're not necessarily unique, but they are so constant. They're so consistent. They're so, in every action, you can very much tell that, you can very much tell that they're their own person. 
and I think that's really great. And you know, they find a way to have a lot of differing uh, like mindsets and ways of thinking about things. But a lot of the time, they all have the common goal. Like in the beginning, they all had the common goal of overthrowing humans, and they were all like rushing bravely into battle. And yet, they weren't just noble warriors, um, like how many warrior cats turn into when they're in battle. They lose all personality, and now are just claws that are flinging around. Um, there's not much thinking going on. It's just like blah blah blah. <laughs> but with them, it was it was very clear before, after, during the battle, that they were all their own people with their own strength, their own flaws, their own character personalities, their own, their own traits, you know, if you know what I mean. So I really, really liked that. Characters are one of my favorite things about books. Like if, if you do the characters well, you got me, you got me. Then the plot was far, 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 far from bad. It was superb, superb plot. It's, it was dark, yeah, and it was it was kind of like, it was just sad, and it was scary, but in a good way, you know. When you're a reader, you want to feel emotions, and this definitely made me feel some emotions, okay? And there was some shock factor going in, too. I wasn't expecting that. Like, it had a Brave Lions level shock factor every once in a while in there. Um, for example, when Boxer got turned into glue, the fact that they actually did that... The fact that Napoleon became so far from the Napoleon we knew in the beginning so fast but because of the power. The fact that the dogs actually became like these bodyguards and this army. That was, dude, it's so good. It's so good, dude. I love how they made it so that every single person could help in every project, no matter their size or strength, they would find a way. Um... This applied to like chickens and geese, but also to pigs in the sense that they weren't very strong, but they were clever. That didn't turn out very well. <laughs> but the point is, is that even though each animal is very different from another, but just in the sense that they're different species, all of them were able to work towards a common goal. All of them working hard all day long um, while still actually like doing something, I guess. They, all of them were able to make progress even though they were small. And I liked that because, you know, sometimes, for example, let's take Cinderpelt. I recently watched a Bright Guardian and Akira video about Cinderpelt and it was about like how she totally could have been a warrior even though her leg was bad. You know, there are many cats uh, who are strays who survive with complete loss of one of their legs and yet they, they go fine. You know, they're sprinting and jumping, it's not as good, but they go fine, right? That was the point of that video mostly. And I feel like with warriors, they do make it so that depending on your size, strength, uh, health, whether you have injuries or not, you are very clearly less able to serve your clan. Whereas with this story, you could be a rat, even though they didn't, they didn't recruit rats. You could be like, I don't know, you could be anything really. You could be... Pfft, and it, like birds, you could be a sheep, you could be a big horse like Boxer, you could be a cow, you could be a hen, you could be anything. You could be ducklings. You will always, always have a role, and I really, really like that. Um, but yeah, so I I liked that they were all able to talk. Um, I, I, liked, I liked that. I liked that they were able to talk together and that they all had plans. Like for the windmill, I really liked the windmill, except for it just made me sad how it kept getting blown up. Like, geez. Jeez, I really don't like that Snowball turned out to be evil because I actually really like Snowball. I still don't know if it, if Snowball is completely innocent or not. There's a lot of mysteries, and I think that's the same for like many governments. You don't know much of anything about what's going on in there. Um, you know some basic things, the things that they uh, make public, but like things with the happenings like within the FBI or something. You don't know everything is the point. And I still don't know everything about this. I don't know if snowball was evil or not like that's confusing for me because even though it seems like it based off of what napoleon and everybody was saying and it makes sense um some more than others some points of what snowball did more than others um i believe that he was actually trying in in the battle and he was actually being brave and everything but i also think it's possible that he destroyed the windmill the first time around I don't know. There's confusion going in there. There's confusion, and it's kind of good. Like, I don't like it when, uh, especially with a short one-series book, I don't like it when you have nothing to chew on afterwards, when everything's wrapped up. I like 
I don't, that's not necessarily saying that I like loose ends, but there were no loose ends here. The, all the important ends got tied together. They were just like one little fiber sticking out. And that is, is Snowball actually evil? It doesn't actually matter for the plot, because if he was evil or not, Napoleon would say that he was evil. That's a fact. I'm sure of that. But was he? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. And it, I like that. I really like that. It makes me scared, but also I kind of feel really bad for Snowball, poor guy. Um, also, like, just how tyrannical it became so fast. It was crazy to me. In the beginning, it was a little bit slow-paced, and you were kind of just, like, reading about communism from a pig, but then it, it it picked up, it picked up, and then characters appeared and became important and then did things, and yeah, it, all, it picked up pace really, really fast, and a lot of really cool things happened, cool characters were introduced, I really enjoyed this book. Um, if you want to figure out how I found Animal Farm, then you're going to go ahead and click on my podcast link below. I actually did a podcast where I was going through a bunch of animal point of view novels on Goodreads to find, try and find more, and among them was Animal Farm. So, yeah, please go ahead and check that out if you're interested. And, yeah, there you go. That's my review on Animal Farm. I totally recommend it. Uh, it was very, very good, and I... Dude, it was great. <laughs> So if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!